South East. So um, now number is still not getting up. So we, I think we it should be fine now because most people got uh, vaccination already. Vaccinated, yes, yes, and that helped us also. The the third vaccination is, I think, uh, it's a success. Yeah, for for us, for all of us, I think. <laughs> okay. And I are you still open? Are you open the 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 school yet, or you are you still in online? Uh, online. Now, it's a summer semester, so it's still online. But the first semester is gonna be in July, the fourth of July, and it's gonna be on campus. Everything gonna oh, be on. So. So on July, you positive, uh, open the campus. Yeah. One hundred percent. Okay, that's 100%. good. That's yeah. good news. I yeah. hope we will too, <laughs> but we're still online, uh, virtual education right now. Yeah, too long. Too long, yeah. of course, yeah. too long, yeah. two years, it's too long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So I've seen, oh, you've been, I've seen your CV and you've been um, in uh, United States, uh, United Kingdom here yeah, for your uh, master and uh, doctoral degree. Yes, yes. And uh, in what area, Mr. Um, Dr. I got a degree in economics, especially mm -hmm. development economics. Uh, I did mm -hmm. my research about microfinance and well-being to see the impact of uh, small loans of microfinance on to improve the quality of life, well-being of people wow. in, in rural Thailand. Yeah. So, so maybe I, next time, I think that's... Um, because our university, it's um, we have uh, uh, the the in the mission for the uh, me, uh, small medium enterprises. Maybe if there's any chance, we can collaborate in um, maybe research or or anything. Uh, join an article to get yeah, the yeah. yeah about the theme for the the small medium and enterprises because yeah. that's. Um, uh, our uh, mission in the university and also in our faculty also, Mr. Tanawit. Yeah, it's especially similar to our university. Now, our, our university will have an ultimate goal of innovation and entrepreneurship. And mm, so related yes. to a uh, small and medium enterprise, one of yes. the end of the entrepreneurship mission. So it's good we share the same, quite similar mission. Yeah, so, very, very, very similar. That's our mission in our faculty and our university. So maybe it, it is our hope that maybe we can not only visiting lecture, but maybe we can um, uh, go further for collaboration. Okay. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, what about the English student? Uh, they can understand English. Is is it? Yes, some of them uh, can understand, yes. but uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. <laughs> uh, our our uh, this 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 class, uh, we take the opportunity to get you for the lecture, uh, fixed sitting lecture is uh, to prepare for the student also, and to to get them the knowledge or the, and the experience to have a foreigner from outside their campus in, uh, in English speaking, yeah? So they can uh, see what others from other universities. Yeah, that's good. And if you visit our campus, you can- or having, uh, you come and have a, yeah. Yeah, and if you come to our campus, you can learn, uh, practice English, and you can learn Thai language as well. <laughs> our student can speak some uh, Malay, you know, Mal it's similar, right? The the, the Malay and uh, Indonesian, the language is quite similar, right? Malay language and Indonesian. Yeah, quite sim similar, almost, almost, yeah. Almost the same. <laughs> uh, Malay and Indonesian, not quite similar, but we can understand each other. <laughs> Do you speak Malaysia? Malayan? I mean, 
I'm so sorry. I can speak just some words. No, <laughs> you speak English. <laughs> uh, like Makanasi, uh, apa kabar? Uh, apa kabar? I put. I can speak very few words. So yeah. So. Okay, that's okay, Mister uh, Tanawi. Okay. Uh, sorry to interrupt <laughs> the discussion. The, okay. Uh, chat. Uh, can we get started for, for this event, Miss mm -hmm. Tan, Mr. Tanawit yeah, yeah. and Miss Tata? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Gokuncoro, and I will be the master of ceremony for today's event. First of all, I'd like to give my regards to all the honorable mention that have already joined the event today. First, to dear honorable guest, Dr. Tanawit Bunsit from Taksin University, Songla, Thailand, as the guest lecturer today. Dear honorable Dr. Kartatis Mukar, SAMM, as the dean of the Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Muria Kudus. This is Dian Wismar Ain, SAMM, as the Vice Dean One, Dr. Dr. Randa Pony Harsanti, MSE Akate, as the Vice Dean Two, Dr. Dwi Sugiyarto, SAMM, as the Vice Dean Three, the Head of Management Department, Mrs. Nurul Rizka Arumsari, SAMM, and to all our beloved visiting lecture participants today. So, Welcome to the guest lecture event, The Role of Human Resources Management in Creating Organizational Ethical Climate, organized by the Department of Management, Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Moria Kudus. Okay, so before proceeding to the main session, let's have a moment of prayer for the successfulness of the event today. So uh, let's the prayer begin. Finish. And then here is the schedule for today's agenda. First, we will have the opening. And then second, we will continue with the singing of National Anthem of Indonesia and Mars of Faculty Economic and Business Universitas Muria Kudus. And then next, we will have the welcoming speech from our Dean of the Faculty of Economic and Business Universitas Muria Kudus, Dr. Kartati Sumakar, SAMM. And then after that, we will have the main event, the lecture about the rule of, of human resources managed by Dr. Tanawit Bunsit. And then there is a Q&A session after that. And then we will have appreciation session and documentation. And then next, we are going to uh, sing the Bagimun Negeri song. And then the last one is closing. Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda is singing the national anthem of Indonesia and Mars FABUMK. To all the participants, please listen attentively.
cannot hear the song. Maybe you all can sing. You all just sing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe yeah, we, we can sing our anthem actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for for the inconvenience, Sister Sanawit. <laughs> the anthem is good. Yeah. I can hear the, the anthem, but this one, the, <laughs> this one you all can sing. <laughs> you can sing now, everybody. Everybody okay. can sing. Keep. <laughs> Never you can see that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe uh, we can. Okay. Sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> for the inconvenience. <laughs> 500 okay. people. <laughs> 500 together. <laughs> That's okay. Too many people. Okay. Okay. So now let's officially start the event today with the opening remark from the Dean of Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Muria Kudus, Dr. Kertati Sumekar, SAMM. To Dr. Kertati Sumekar, SAMM, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, Dr. Muhammad Teguh uh, Konjoro as a Master of Ceremony today. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Uh, welcome. To our honorable Mr. Sanawit Punsit, Dr. Sanawit Punsit, yeah, for in our visiting lecturer for today, uh, our honorable vice deans today who join us uh, this morning, Mrs. Dian Wismar Eng, Dr. Pony Hersanti, and Dr. Dwi, uh, Dr. Dwi, uh, our honorable respected lecturers, heads of department, and also uh, faculty or staff and uh, all of the students for today. Uh, it is also a, a great honor for me to welcome all of you today and especially to Mr. Tanawit Punsit for having this time uh, today to having uh, this le visiting lecturer with us. Uh, and as you know, Mr. Sanawit, that our faculty business and uh, economy and business Universitas Muria Kudus uh, has been in, established in the year of 1978. And our vision, of course, uh, to create a future leaders of tomorrow by imparting education, knowledge, and skill. Uh, the objective of this, this faculty was not only uh, only for uh, for educated on theoretical education, but also to nurture our students to keep them root to the social culture, local wisdom, and ethics to become uh, we call it an ahlakul karimah student. An ahlakul karimah student is a students with good deeds and attitude. So I think it's uh, related with the ethical climate, or, uh, organization ethical climate uh, in the human resource management. Uh, it is also, uh, we are one of the uh, recognized uh, uh, private university in the East Coast region of Central Java. Uh, one of, uh, in Central Java, we are uh, also uh, have a good um, recognize, yeah, recognize in our uh, province. Uh, this visiting lecturer has been, we always have this one for uh, almost every semester we conduct this visiting lecturer. And we try, uh, we try to keep fresh and keep uh, informed uh, emerging topics every semester, every year, so the student can have uh, this us and participate or share their thought and opinions about the matter that was uh, in this uh, theme. And the theme for today, I think it's uh, almost like, um, uh, I like this one for ethical climate because ethics, we, we live in ethical uh, society, especially in Asia, whether it is um, uh, written or 
or not yeah we 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 have this ethical ethical boundaries between uh, in in our lives also it affect the business of uh, business uh, and uh, education for the students so today i hope we can have uh, the knowledge broadened up by mr sanawit punsit to share the, uh, his knowledge and experience or also uh, they're uh, more um, vision for this uh, theme for today. And for our students, I hope you can learn and you participate and discuss in the end of the session. So this can be, have a benefit uh, to all of us. I think that's all for me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sanawit Punsit for having uh, this visiting lecturer. And I go back to Mr. Muhammad Teguh Kuncoro. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Kartati Sumekar SMM for the warm welcome. And then next. Now let's move into the main agenda for today. That is the guest lecture with the topic the Role of Human Resources Management in Creating Organizational Ethical Climate by Dr. Tanawit Punzit. This discussion will be guided by uh, Mrs. Daivina Itznitya, SA MBA. She is the lecturer in the Department of Management, Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Muria Kudus. So uh, to keep it short, let's welcome Mrs. Daivina Itznitya, SA MBA, as our moderator today. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Tegu for the opportunity. Yes, so, welcome. yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am Davina, the moderator of today's visiting lecture. Uh, I'm very happy to see you here and welcome all of you to this event. And today's event is about the role of human resource management in creating organizational ethical climate. All right, so before we start the discussion, I would like to uh, introduce our speaker today is Dr. Tanawit Bunsit. He is one of the lecturer from Faculty of Economics and Business Administration, Taksin University, Songla, Thailand. And Dr. Tanawit Bunsit obtained a bachelor degree from Taksin University, took a master degree from Sri Nakarin Wirot University, and a doctorate degree PhD from University of Bath in United Kingdom. And currently, he is the head of economics department, Taksin University, Songla, Thailand. And in 2003 until 2004, he was one of the economists in public debt of management office, PDMO at Ministry of Finance, Thailand. All right, so Dr. Tanawit Bunsit, how are you today? Okay, thank you for the introduction. So uh, I'm very honored to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me to talk to you today. And I hope to share my um, knowledge about uh, uh, ethical climate to you so we can share. And yeah. today I want to be more active learning. So I will give a talk a little bit and maybe I can ask you some questions and students can have uh, a chance to uh, participate, to talk. You can talk in Indonesian or you can talk in Thai or you can talk in English, so whatever. So uh, sorry, so you uh, can help me translate to English, okay? Yes, yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh, correct, sir. So before the presentation starts, uh, let me tell how the presentation will go to the participants. So first, Dr. Tanawit Bunsit will be invited to present the material during his presentation. I will translate the material to Bahasa. Jadi untuk uh, Bapak, Ibu, teman-teman mahasiswa semua di sini, nanti pada saat Dr. Tanawit Bunsit memberikan material, nanti saya akan menjadi live translator di sini untuk uh, mentranslate dari Indonesia uh, dari bahasa Inggris ke Indonesia. Then after one hour presentation, there will be a question and answer session followed by a conclusion. Jadi nanti setelah uh, presentasinya selesai selama satu jam, nanti akan ada question and answer. Jadi ada pertanyaan dari teman-teman silahkan yang mau ditanyakan. Uh, nanti mungkin saya akan berikan waktu tiga pertanyaan atau misalnya bisa lebih gitu dan nanti akan ada door prize terbaik untuk pertanyaan uh, door prize untuk pertanyaan terbaik gitu ya. 
Uh, all right, then the time is yours for Dr. Tanawit Bunsit. You can start now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you so much for uh, having me today. And um, so today we will talk about the role of uh, human resource management in creating organizational ethical climate. So my name is Tanawit Bunsit from Thaksin University, Songkla Campus, Thailand. Let's start from this picture. So I want you to uh, see these three pictures and maybe you, in your life, maybe when you are young or maybe when you work or you work with your friends, your colleagues and in, or even in your society, maybe you see this thing happen, right? So there yeah, are some people, you know, when you're young, people bully, uh, lots of bullying, lots of fighting, lots of uh, discrimination, lots of injustice in uh, school or workplace. So, and sometimes you think in your mind that you think that someone should do something. It's the question you think in your mind, right? Or I should do something. But sometimes you don't want to do anything. You want to just keep watching. So anyone, can you raise your hand or can you type in the chat that you, anyone who brave enough to participate in this event, you go and you intervene intervene in the, the situation or you just keep quiet? Anyone? Okay. okay untuk teman-teman yes. partisipan, ini Dr. Tanawit Bunsit menanyakan dengan gambar yang ada di dalam presentasi sekarang, itu teman-teman bakal ikut untuk um, apa, uh, to do something-nya itu apa? gitu Maksudnya untuk melakukannya itu apa? Mau tetap diam dan melihat atau akan melakukan sesuatu dengan melihat adanya bullying atau diskriminit uh, diskriminasi di lingkungan sekitar teman-teman gitu. Anyone, anyone want to share experience or want to say anything, or you just um, type in the chat if you have any experience that. Uh, about this situation. This is going to be linked to our ethical climate in organization. So this you linked. Uh, I will talk later why these are uh, linked to an ethical climate. Yeah, teman-teman, ada yang uh, mau share? Silakan. Pakai bahasa Indonesia juga tidak apa-apa. Nanti saya translate in. Oh, I'm not sure. Do you have any signal? You can send signal on your screen. Thumbs up, thumbs down, or yes, you can. You can. Yeah, we can do that. You can share the signal that uh, if you have any experience. How can I see this? Anyone want to share? Uh, maybe later, right? Because maybe you think so. The people who just watch it, keep watching this uh, situation, we call in English, we call bystander. Bystander. So it means you just keep watching and you think that, oh, you don't want to do anything, you want to be safe, you just keep quiet, right? But some people, they are very brave. They're brave enough to get involved and just want to uh, <clears throat> to get this to happen to make it uh, better. So we're gonna talk later that why this is gonna be important for the um, oh someone raised their hand. Yeah, there's a raise hand and also in chat. Okay. Um, can you 
Yeah, the okay. So in the chat, I will keep silent not to join the bullying and do nothing. Okay, I keep silent. Okay, this one. See now. From Yoka Adi, right? Okay. Yeah. So silent. What else? Anyone who raised your hand? Anyone raise hand? Yeah, someone raised hand. You can, you can talk in English or you can talk in Indonesian. It's fine. One. Uh, will Danun, right? Yudanan Nachiya. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, you can you can talk, you can share your experience. Hello. We'll try to break it break it up, even though it's not that easy. Okay, yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. I report Tika situation. Okay, keep it's okay, you can keep uh putting your uh share your experience in the chat, it's fine, right? You can share your experience in the chat, okay? We can discuss later. So um after this, I will come back to this uh question, okay. So first, we can talk a little bit about HIM first. I think you from the school of management, you know that what does it mean, HIM, human resource management. But sometimes we call HR, right? HR, you, you know about this term already. So it's a, all the process relating to from employing people, train them, compensate them, develop uh, the skills, train them to be have a better performance and developing strategies, retain them, how to keep them to the organization as long as possible. So this is called HRM, right? So this is very, uh, very common in, the, um, in all organization, even in private or public uh, organizations, right? And uh, the functions of HRM, so it's going to link to relate to the all the structure, sharing, improve the productivity of people in the organization, try to make seamless coordination and harmony of people in the organization. People can work together, ensuring that everybody happy, make people, make employees satisfy and improve the performance of uh, employee and also facilitate uh, inclusive, uh, try to include everyone in the sense of working together in an organization. For example, share the, the, we have shared value of the organization. So this HIM will help to uh, everybody to work together peacefully and with a high satisfaction and high productivity. And why we, we need HRM? So the HIM, there's four levels of uh, objective or HIM. Uh, you have, we have uh, human resource management. We want to, sorry, I talk too long. Uh, we need to translate, right? Yes, correct. Uh, jadi teman-teman untuk H, uh, HRM, mungkin teman-teman sudah tahu kepanjangan dari apa. Biasanya kita sebut HR atau human resource. Tapi kalau misalnya di bahasa Indonesia ini, kita bicaranya tentang sumber daya manusia gitu ya. Nah, ketika kita, kita ketika kita ngomongin HRM atau uh, sumber daya manusia, ini tentang proses mempekerjakan orang dan melatih mereka atau dengan memberi kompensasi dan mengembangkan kebijakan yang berkaitan dengan uh, sumber daya manusia itu tersebut gitu. Dan setelah itu kita juga mengembangkan strategi gimana caranya supaya kita bisa mempertahankan itu gitu. Dan uh, can you go to the next slide? Ya. Yeah. Jadi ini adalah untuk fungsi kenapa kita ha harus punya HRM atau kita punya uh, sumber daya manusia, kita harus tahu gitu. Kalau misalnya uh, sumber daya manusia ini itu untuk menentukan struktur sama produktivitas dari employee-nya, dari uh, sumber daya manusia yang yang sedang dipekerjakan dan juga memfasilitasi inklusitas uh, dalam segala hal dan juga memastikan kepuasan dari karyawan itu sendiri. Apakah mereka bekerja dengan happy atau tidak gitu. Dan selain itu juga untuk Um, apa ya mengecek gitu untuk produktivitasnya mereka sudah performance yang mereka berkembang atau tidak gitu jadi untuk memungkinkan koordinasi dan harmoni yang sangat mulus gitu 
Okay, you can next. Okay, but uh, HIM, the first level is personal objective. So HIM uh, try to help a, a personal performance in develop personnel, develop uh, each employee to increase their capacity, their, their ability to work. And the second level is the functional level. This is uh, to help the HR department, inside the HR department uh, work properly. And the organizational objective is to help the organization, for example, the company or university, school, uh, to uh, maintain their capacity to work properly. And the last one is societal objective. So this link to a law, conduct of code of conduct, or so link to the society that to make sure that uh, the organization uh, do it in the right way, not misconduct anything. Okay, uh, jadi kenapa kita harus uh, tahu tentang SDM ini atau belajar tentang HRM ini adalah kita dibagi dari beba uh, ada beberapa fungsi gitu. Jadi fungsinya di sini ada dari personal yaitu kita bisa lihat dari pribadi. Ini adalah untuk membantu produktivitas dari employee-nya tersebut gitu. Jadi untuk memantau mereka berkembang dengan baik atau tidak. Lalu di sini ada functional dan organizational yang which is hampir sama dengan gimana caranya si HR department ini atau misalnya human resource department ini bekerja dengan baik gitu secara fungsional dan juga secara organisasional mungkin yang organisasional contohnya seperti university atau misalnya company in a large way gitu tapi kalau fungsional lebih ke departemennya ke sumber daya manusianya dan untuk social objektifnya itu ada untuk make sure kalau yang dilakukan oleh company ini sudah do, do it in the right way atau sudah bekerja dengan baik sesuai dengan Uh, yang berja uh, yang sesu sesuai dengan etikal yang ada di sosial gitu. Oke, okay, sir, Oke, okay, so when we talk about move on to the organization, organizational climate. So when we talk about organizational climate, sometimes uh, people confuse with the uh, organizational culture. Actually, it's different thing because organizational climate is uh, related to the quality of the uh, internal environment of the organization of the company and is perceived by its member. So it's about how uh, employees, how the members of the organization think about the, the, uh, the organization. And uh, organizational climate is actually is broader than the culture. So actually, some people use the culture and climate interchangeably, but actually it's totally different construct. All right, so tentang organizational climate atau iklim organisasi, ini tuh berbeda dengan yang seperti biasa. Jadi uh, organisasi iklim organisasi ini lebih berbicara tentang kualitas yang relatif bertahan lama yang dirasakan oleh anggotanya. Gitu. Dan ini lebih luas daripada uh, organizational culture atau organis, uh, organisasi budayanya gitu. Okay, so when we talk about climate, the climate is actually the perception of employee that uh, think about the atmosphere of internal environment, including the rules, uh, the how the employee uh, treated, important to the group, and the potential success. So it's all about the uh, environment of the um, organization that from the perspective perception of uh, employee. Sorry, okay. Jadi okay. ketika kita bicara dengan iklim, uh, itu adalah bicara tentang persepsi karyawan tentang uh, bagaimana suasana di lingkungan internalnya, termasuk dari aturannya dan bagaimana karyawan itu diperlakukan. Yang terpenting adalah dari kelompok itu sendiri atau dari uh, karyawan itu sendiri dan or keberhasilan dari organisasinya. All right. Okay, so now uh, from this slide, I will compare a little bit about the climate and the culture from the study of Cook in 2017. So the first one, when we compare between climate and culture. So the climate will relate to uh, the perception or the attitude of uh, employees. So this one is uh, 
easy to see, you know, is you can see from your observation, you can see us for, from the feelings of the employees. So it's very easy to measure. So it's, you can use, you can measure by using a uh, questionnaire or evaluation form, for example, the satisfaction uh, questionnaire. So this is all about perception and attitudes. Uh, but the culture, culture is really going to be another dimension. It's going to be about values, beliefs, and norm. What do you think? Uh, how we should behave and how we shouldn't do, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, what works, what not work. So this is a difference between the climate and culture. Alright, uh, berdasarkan dari COP 2017, uh, perbedaan dari iklim dan culture atau budaya itu sendiri adalah ketika kita bicara dengan iklim itu berbicara tentang persepsi dan uh, attitude kita gitu. Gimana ini bisa dilihat dengan observasi, dengan uh, dilihat dari predisposisinya dan pengamatan berdasarkan dari sensori atau subjektifnya dan kita bisa pakai kuesioner untuk ini. Beda dengan culture yang kita lihatnya uh, kita berbicara tentang values, uh, nilai, dan beliefs atau kepercayaan. gitu Dan juga kita berbicara tentang norma. Uh, apa yang harus kita uh, pikirkan, apa yang harus kita lakukan berdasarkan norma yang sesuai. Seperti itu. Oke, okay, dokter. You can use, uh, you can next it. Oke, okay, and uh, when we talk about climate and culture, uh, another difference is, is, uh, is easy to see. The climate is very visible, very easy to see, and uh, is measurable. Is uh, when we want to make some changes, so we talk about climate because it's easy to see. But culture, culture sometimes is difficult to see. Is quite uh, latent. Is difficult to measure, and it's quite stable. It's not going to change all the time. So it's relatively uh, climate is more changeable and culture is quite stable. Alright, uh, selain itu ada juga berdasarkan dari yang uh, lain itu kalau misalnya kita berbicara dengan tentang iklim itu lebih membi, uh, lebih terlihat gitu, lebih menonjol, lebih terukur dan per persepsinya dan perubahannya itu bisa kita lihat gitu. Dan berorientasi pada masa lalu atau uh, sekarang berbeda dengan culture yang dimana Uh, itu susah untuk kita lihat gitu beda dengan uh, iklim gitu dan ini juga orientasinya itu melihat ke masa depan seperti itu. Okay and so uh, when we in conclusion is climate is easy to understand to see to measure to change and the culture is more uh, very concrete very uh, it's difficult to change it's quite stable and it take long time. Yeah, culture can be can be changed, but it takes a longer time to change. And uh, so, if we want to change the culture of our organization culture, so we have to change. Normally, we change the climate of the organization, and we keep changing, keep uh, uh, changing the what the environment of the organization. And finally, uh, we want to change to the culture of the our. Uh, workplace, but it takes time. So especially, uh, normally we want we focus on the organizational climate first. So if we can change the climate in the environment of the organization, finally we plan for the culture change in the future. Yeah. Okay. Uh, dari uh, slide ini kita bisa uh, konklusikan kalau misalnya culture itu adalah uh, atau budaya itu lebih tidak stabil dan lama berubahnya gitu. Jadi akan lebih lama ketika kita merubah uh, culture atau budaya organisasi ketimbang dari kita merubah dari iklim dari organisasi. Jadi makanya uh, tadi dokter Tanawit Bunsit bilang kalau misalnya lebih bagus kalau misalnya kita uh, merubah untuk climate-nya climate organizational dulu gitu ketimbang dari culture karena itu lebih lama. Okay, you can and, ask. And how we can use these two terms? So uh, we can be we use climate and culture. We can be used in take action. If you want to take action to change our environment of the the organization, we will change the climate. We're not going to change the culture. 
So we take action. The climate can be used to uh, for the operationalize the value and belief to change the norm and to implement something, a little, little change in the organization. If something wrong, we can fix, we can change. But culture, we not gonna change it, but we try to understand, we try to promote understanding, we try to uh, describe it, and we try to um, uh, start, we can try to start the, the change, but we cannot change the, totally change the culture, but we can change from the a little uh, items of in the climate organization, in the operational climates first, and then the, the culture we change in the longer term. Yeah. So this is how we use it. Okay, uh, untuk kita menggunakan climate atau culture-nya itu, kalau climate itu lebih ke take action, jadi lebih ke uh, doing things-nya gitu, untuk melakukannya langsung. Kalau misalnya ada yang salah, itu kita bisa langsung berubah, kita bisa langsung rubah itu gitu. Berbeda kalau misalnya kita berbicara tentang culture itu lebih ke uh, tidak bisa dilakukan secara aksi. Mungkin ini ini salah gitu, tapi dia secara long term kita bisa rubah, tapi ya lebih cepat ke, ketika kita merubah klimatnya dulu ketimbang dari culture-nya. Oke, okay. so we want to have a ethical climate, very good, healthy, ethical climate. So what is the signal? What is the signal of good or healthy ethical climate in our organization, in our company, in our university, in our school? Uh, so we need, this is a signal, just a basic uh, sign to show that it's a very good ethical climate. So for example, we have inclusion. Everybody work together. Everybody is not left behind. Everybody understand each other and work together. Trust the employees uh, in the company. Trust have trust to the company, to the leader, the justice. So everybody uh, are treated equally. Have justice in the organization. Integrity. Be honest, right? We have a very strong morale principle so this is integrity and we have a strong structure reinforcement for example we have the reward system if someone do very well do very, did very good job we give a good reward uh, or if we have a very uh, good performance evaluation process so everybody can be evaluated uh, fairly and the last one is uh, organizational citizenship. So sometimes the company have to show their point, their standpoint that uh, they uh, look after stakeholder very well, or look after the environment, the CSR, or the corporate activism. For example, the company can show the activism like they care about um, the disabled, they care about some uh, uh, vulnerable groups, for example. So these are the healthy ethical climate. So if any organization have this uh, item, so this shows a very good ethical climate. Okay, ini adalah salah satu ciri-ciri di mana komisar organisasi itu mempunyai ethical climate yang uh, bagus, yang baik gitu. Dari sini kita ada inklusi. Inklusi di sini adalah contohnya kalau misalnya uh, pekerjanya itu work together atau bekerja bersama-sama. Lalu ada trust. Di sini ada kepercayaan di mana karyawan percaya terhadap bos mereka, percaya terhadap satu tim mereka dan percaya pada organisasinya mereka. Lalu di sini ada integrity. Ini lebih ke kayak jujur gitu, uh, melakukan pekerjaan ini secara jujur. Dan di sini ada structural reinforcement di mana ada reward system. Itu adalah kalau misalnya kita uh, ada sistem apa ya namanya reward uh, ya sistem reward kalau misalnya ada yang apa yang bagus gitu nanti kita akan dapat tambahan gitu istilahnya lalu juga ada organizational citizens uh, citizenship itu ada fokusnya ke CSR atau corporate social responsibility yang khusus untuk ke sosial uh, di lingkungan kampanyenya. Oke, okay, now go back to the first question and show you three photos, right? The photos related to some a uh, story when like when you are young or at workplace but now i just want to ask the same thing what should you do if you encounter these situations so for example you have you you know that uh, someone in your school in your company uh have some bribery or something 
uh, um, not clean, very in the gray zone. So what you do if you know about it, if you know about this, what 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 you what should you do? You're gonna keep quiet, or you're gonna do something, or you're gonna tell someone. Uh, another one is if you see this this girl, this lady, maybe someone about six or sexual harassment. Uh, so what what you're gonna do? You're gonna keep quiet. You're gonna shout for her. You're gonna help her, or you said okay, it's it's not our business. We just keep quiet. What you're gonna do, and why you want to do that? And the last one, maybe this one is related to you, maybe uh, for the university fee. During last year, uh, the last two years, we have the online classroom, at, but some university, some school have to pay a full fee. And some, some students, they're not happy. They want to get a uh, discount. You're going to keep quiet. Okay, it's fine. We don't need discount or you want to do something to get this car because of uh, we stay at home, we work from uh, study from home. So we need some discount for our tuition fee. Okay, so I have three case study. So I want you to share your your thought or what you think, or if maybe share your experience if you have uh, this kind of experience. Okay, anyone? Raise your hand or you can just type if you don't want to talk, you can type in your in the chat. Or if you want to share your idea, you can talk in English or you can talk in Indonesian. And uh, yeah, okay. mungkin untuk teman-teman bisa memberikan uh, pemikirannya atau pendapatnya terkait dengan gambar yang ada di layar teman-teman sekarang. Ada di sini ada korupsi, ada bribery, dan di sini juga ada uh, teman yang kena sexual harassment gitu. Dan di sini juga ada yang Uh, lebih ke tuition fee-nya gitu untuk uh, pembayaran sekolahnya ada yang dapat full ada yang dapatnya cuma uh, setengah atau gitu jadi uh, apa nih untuk teman-teman pendapatnya kalau misalnya ketemu dengan situasi yang seperti ini bisa teman-teman chat atau bisa teman-teman langsung raise hand aja oke okay, anyone anyone want to there is no right or wrong answer just share some ideas or your thought or your experience anyone or, or you can chat you can type in okay yoga adi pratama hello hi yeah, yeah. You can... oh, hello okay. uh, for number one uh, bravery uh, i'm not going to change this but if yeah. I will report this. Uh, I don't know if I can believe someone who I can report because maybe he tell the uh, tersangka. <laughs> okay. Uh, for number two, that I will report this to the police because now it's so so okay. popular about sexual harassment. And uh -huh. for number three, I think it's common for the Indonesian the same that it can. I can do nothing about this, so yeah, that's my answer. Good, good, thank you. Anyone? Ada yang lain? Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe my experience is okay, sir. So, okay. Yeah, previously okay. when I before I was uh, before I became the lecturer, I work in a multinational company, and I saw that some of my bosses doing like a bribery, but uh -huh. I cannot I cannot share it to my HR because if I can show uh, if I saw uh, if I tell them, I mean like uh, maybe I can get you know uh, punishment. Maybe yeah. I will get. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, okay. yeah, it's common now. I mean, like in yeah. some of the company. Okay, that is the same in Thailand. So, is if you think that oh, I I saw this, but I you not you're afraid you you're not brave enough to do that. Don't yeah. worry, yeah. it's common. This is common. This is natural. This is natural of human beings we, we we 
tend to be quiet. We have we gonna be bystander. We don't we're not gonna do anything because uh, we have to be uh, the sense of security or the sense of acceptance. Other people they don't do that, so we have to do like others. So it's common. I think your husband the same. You 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 have to be safe. You want to be safe. You don't want to have problem with others, and you don't want to get in trouble. Uh, or you you said it's it's not your business, so you don't do anything. Or even the tuition fee. So you think that oh you don't want to make problem. People gonna look at you and oh you're gonna be a bad person, complain all the time. So you just keep quiet. So this is common in in the nature of. Uh, in the human being nature. Uh, anyone want to share any other thoughts or different? Okay, so this we call hesitation. Is hesitation is happen when you come to the junction that you have to design, you have to choose. You have to choose at what you're gonna do when you see this ethical issue in your organization, in your society. We hesitate, we, we're gonna do this, or we, we keep quiet, or what we gonna do? But it's common that no, uh, normally about 90% people gonna be uh, keep quiet, be a bystander. Okay, you want to translate a bit? Ya, jadi uh, ini common ya teman-teman kalau misalnya kita uh, takut untuk uh, apa namanya memberitahu ke pihak berwajib atau seperti itu gitu. Jadi ini adalah common kalau misalnya kita takut afraid atau hesitate seperti itu. So what we what we need if you are a leader of the organization, if you work uh, in a organization, you are the in HR department or you are the key person in the organization or even you are the one small person in the organization you need what you need is courage so this is one main key key um, element if you want to be a good leader a good leader as a leader you need courage so if you don't have courage you cannot be ethical leader in the organization you cannot be um, um uh, ethical leader in the organization so it's you need courage to do it's opposite of fear you see the fear is another side courage is another side so you need courage to do this to uh, get involved to take part in that situation so you need to be courage but it's not easy to do that because when the process of human uh, brain when we uh, get pressure when we get pressure from other factors we tend to think and then we tend to be quiet stop doing anything that's going to harm ourselves we want to save ourselves so to be courage is means you you think and you you put you go forward to solve that problem so it's hard to do it but is our choice, your choice, you can do, you can choose to do or not to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jadi di sini adalah pilihan kita. Uh, kalau misalnya kita menghadapi situasi itu seperti, sebagai leader, itu kita bisa courage untuk berani untuk uh, melawan itu atau kita bisa juga ya it's common gitu untuk manusia sebagai manusia itu takut. Cuman uh, pilihannya adalah harus tetap berani gitu. We need to be courage. We need to be uh, not afraid, gitu, nggak, nggak takut, gitu, untuk melawan hal-hal yang seperti ini. Gitu. Okay, I have another example activity for you. This one is a little bit um, easier. Uh, what will you do? For uh, I have the situation for you. So you know that this lady, this lady is uh, plagiarized or copy the work of this man in this organization. So they say they copy the work of this man and present the work to the boss and she got promoted. But actually this work is from this guy. This guy has worked so hard and the lady got the work and uh, pro she got promoted. So what you're gonna do? You're gonna uh, be uh, with the lady. You think, oh, she's gonna get promoted. She, 
uh, you sh you're gonna be take the side of the lady or you want to help the, the man, you're gonna report to your boss or you keep quiet. Okay, can you type in the chat if you gonna support the lady who copy, get the work from the man and get promotion. So type one, you type in the chat, type one if you support the lady. If you want to help the man, and you want to fight for the man, even you know that maybe you're going to get in trouble. You're going to help this guy. He works so hard. Tie number two. But if you say that you're going to be, oh, you don't, you're afraid, you don't want to do anything, it's going to be so risky. So you type three. Okay, I just want to check the, <laughs> the proportion. Okay, one, you support the lady. Two, you support the guy who is a victim, and three, you just keep quiet. Okay, could you help translate a bit? Untuk teman-teman bisa ditulis di kolom chat, mau support yang cewek atau yang cowok, kalau yang cewek nomor satu, yang cowok nomor dua. Oh, lots of people support the guy, but you know the result, right? Maybe you're going to be punished. You're going to be, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> if you help the man, you're going to get in trouble. You, you, you know, the boss not going to believe you maybe. And you're going to, you're going to get into big trouble. Number two. So you're brave. Oh, so in this class, you are very brave. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> You don't worry that you're gonna be in trouble, huh? You you try to help this guy. Oh, everybody's two. Uh, press two. No one uh, support the lady or you keep quiet. You don't want to keep quiet. Number three, no. Okay, so uh, everybody. I think it's everybody got the two. So this is your choice. Yeah, for sure. So in real life, it's gonna be like this, but maybe you you have to think, you have to uh, have a big pause button that you're gonna, what you're gonna do. But in this case, maybe you think it's very easy, but in real life, maybe it's not this easy. Some people, they are very good person, but when we it come to an issue, they just keep quiet. Not be, it's not because they're not good, but sometimes it's hard to get involved and maybe you're going to get uh, in trouble. Okay, so if you're brave, you did this, you have to accept that you're going to get uh, some effect, some uh, reaction back to you. Maybe you're going to get difficulties in your work, in your life, so you have to be calm and you have to be uh, strong. You have very strong moral principles. And uh, this gonna, if everyone think like this, everyone in the organization think like this, it's gonna be great. The organization gonna be uh, the ethical climate in the environment of the, the organization is gonna be good. But if very, very few people think, support the lady or keep quiet, so if all the organization, all the employees keep quiet, so the lady, this lady gonna be get promoted and the ethical climate in the organization gonna be horrendous, very horrible. Yeah. Can you translate a bit? All right, uh, jadi teman-teman kalau misalnya teman-teman milih yang mem, apa, uh, membantu untuk masnya, yang nomor dua ini, Mungkin teman-teman punya brave enough gitu, punya harus punya uh, culture atau misal ethical uh, value yang gede gitu. Ketimbang kalau misalnya uh, kita bisa bantu mbak-mbak yang nomor satu ini, sebenarnya kalau misalnya kita kita pilih yang nomor satu ini, mungkin climate uh, organizational climate-nya itu, climate organizationnya itu bisa terjaga gitu. Ka tapi kalau misalnya banyak orang yang melakukan sama hal seperti mbaknya yang nomor satu ini, itu nanti bakal uh, banyak yang kalau misalnya, men, ini kan contohnya kayak promosi ya, ini lagi tes untuk promosi gitu, nah nanti mbaknya jadi promosi, semuanya jadi kena promosi juga, jadi istilahnya kayak 
nanti organizational climate-nya itu jadi turun gitu karena banyak yang melakukan hal yang sama seperti mbaknya. Tapi kalau misalnya cuma satu atau dua dan kita say silent itu bisa membantu organizational climate-nya itu gitu. But it's your choice again gitu. Itu pilihan lagi dari masing-masing. Oke, okay, so from this example, so we have a good very very healthy ethical climate in this class because everybody not keep quiet you want to help you want to fight you want to help this guy that he works so hard so he should get promoted not the lady who copy and cheat right so good okay so how how we can cultivate more ethical climate in organization we have hrm we have the human resource department human resource management we select good person good people we select people and we work with lots of employees so how are we going to cultivate this more ethical climate so there are very very simple three ways three things this is from the professor schwas uh, identify an ethical purpose so we need to identify what is our ethical purpose in our organization can be our value our core value of our organization it has to be non zero sum has to be non zero sum what does it mean non zero sum so it should contribute should get some contribution to the society or the organization or somewhat someone so you need to set the ethical purpose first what the organization going to do uh, to get good things for the society or for the benefit of consumers or the benefit of the uh, employee for example you said the, the purpose that you going to produce any food non no chemical and very low price for the customer so this can be added, uh, ethical purpose so you need to set this first and the second one you have to you have to create trust uh, you have to trust employees that employee uh going to pursue this purpose you have to make sure that you you trust them they can work together they can work and to pursue this to fulfill this purpose the purpose that you the, the organization set and the third one you have to minimize the use of incentives as a motivating tool it's good to give sometimes you give bonus to your uh employees to use money to be uh, motivating to but don't use the, the money the incentive as a motivating to uh, in motivating to too much you use it sometime so you try to set the ethical purpose and make sure that everybody understand that our organization okay we do the organic organic food we we do good thing for good products for customer uh, we're not going to do harm thing to environment so when the, all the stakeholders or the employees everyone understand this uh, and if anyone can uh, pursue this goal produce this kind of new product that follow our discipline our purpose so we give incentive to them but not use money all the time not use bonus or money all the time but we use other thing uh, like uh, some kind of uh, recognition some type of the uh, other uh, non monetary incentives instead of monetary incentive yeah the monetary incentive is fine sometimes but not all the time so these are three things to cultivate the more ethical climate in the organization Oke, okay, uh, ini gimana cara kita menumbuhkan lebih banyak tentang uh, etika iklim dalam organisasi gitu ya teman-teman. Nah di sini ada tiga cara yaitu mengidentifikasi uh, ada yang namanya non zero sum. Di sini adalah mengidentifik mengidentifikasi tujuan etisnya kita tuh untuk apa terlebih dahulu untuk sosial, untuk customer, untuk employee itu seperti apa. Lalu setelah itu percayakan karyawan untuk uh, mengejar tujuan tersebut gitu dan meminimalisir penggunaan intensif sebagai alat motivi, motivasi gitu kita boleh pakai uh, misal kita kasih reward dalam bentuk money atau uang gitu it's okay tapi uh, it's not always tapi harus uh, sometimes gitu jarang-jarang gitu oke okay, next 
hey, I have another uh, tips for you. You're going to be a leader, right? I hope you're going to be great leaders. You're going to have your own um, company or your own enterprise, or you're going to be part of the uh, company or any organization. So this is some very easy way to create ethical climate uh, using HRM. So the first one, the first trick is screen out the takers. So this is the first thing that you recruit when you recruit a new employee, right? You try to screen. You don't get the takers to your company, to your organization. You need to get the giver, the person who want to give, who want to have passionate to work, want to do good things for the organization, want to do good things to the society. Don't just a uh, selfish person. You just screen out of this kind of person. So this first step, this is a good easy step uh, in the process of HIM that we can uh, bring into uh, play in terms of creating ethical climate. And the second one, when you get um, good responsible people already, the second one, managing performance differently. So when you may uh, try to evaluate performance of your employees, you don't need to do the same way. We can have a new creative uh, performance evaluation. For example, in the past, we can evaluate performance of our employee by doing what, how much they work, uh, how many hours they work, how many sales they can do. Uh, so we can, we just see from what we can see, we can see just from the, the quantity indicators, but um, we can do, uh, we can manage to do the performance evaluation in other way. For example, nowadays, some company, some university, they use the evaluation of how much you can work, you can help others, you can help benefit to other department, benefit to other colleagues. So if you help your colleagues, if you help your partners more, you can get promoted. Not just only work for yourself. If you work for yourself, it's good. You can, you get, a, you can get promotion, but you can get extra uh, points if you help others as well. You help your friends, your colleagues in your in different department. So this is a new way to um, evaluate performance. So this create uh, more ethical climate. So people in the organization help each other and not selfish, not just work for their own, they help other departments as well. The last one is creating environment that people can mobilize and can encourage seeking help. So uh, all the employees, they just not only work for themselves and they have to uh, seek help. They can, can mobilize, can move to other department and can encourage them to seek help. Uh, it means that give them room, give them room to, to work. To, so just not just let them work on their own, but they, if they have problem, they can uh, move on, they can change their work easily, they can change the way they work. Uh, so this way uh, can reduce the, some corruption, some kind of they're seeking the shortcut. They, if they have problem, they can they don't they're not gonna find shortcut to get money. So they just try to find other way or seek help for other people in the organization. So this is from the study. These three easy tips can help you create more ethical climate uh, in organization. Oke, okay, ini adalah beberapa tips nanti uh, ketika kita menjadi pemimpin atau uh, leaders gitu ya, uh, untuk menciptakan iklim etis gitu di lingkungan sekitar kita ada tiga cara. Di sini yang pertama adalah menyaring pekerja, uh, menyaring pekerja ketika kita membuat uh, apa namanya lowongan pekerjaan gitu. Jadi kita bisa menyaring itu terlebih dahulu, mencari yang sesuai dengan uh, apa yang kita butuhkan, apa yang company butuhkan gitu. Lalu yang kedua adalah mengelola atau membuat performance evaluation atau evaluasi performance uh, itu secara berbeda, secara kreatif gitu. Uh, tidak hanya mungkin yang biasanya kita cuman uh, 
apa kalau misalnya sekarang yang baru ada 360 derajat evaluasi kayak gitu kan jadi mungkin itu salah satu caranya gitu lalu di sini juga ada menciptakan lingkungan yang dapat dimobilisasi orang dan mendorong untuk mencari bantuan dalam artian adalah uh, kita membuat ruang gitu memberi ruang pada pekerja untuk berubah atau improve gitu supaya nanti uh, goalsnya adalah mengurangi shortcut atau bribery atau korupsi itu sendiri gitu. Good. So finally I will just finish by this. Um, if ethics are poor at the top, that behavior is copied down through the organization. So this is true. It's scary. That the top is important. So the leader of the organization, the head, the, the leader of the organization has to be the role model for everyone in the, uh, the company or the organization. There is a, a lot of study show the relationship, very strong relationship between the ethical leader, ethical leadership to the ethical climate. So this is a very strong link between the ethical leader and the ethical climate. So I hope you guys, when you finish and you go to be uh, the top of the organization, the top of any company, any organization, even public or private university, keep have a strong moral discipline and moral principle and uh, very brave courage. Gonna, gonna let you be the top of the the leader. Okay, so I gonna stop here and we gonna have a full time, have lots of time to discuss. Okay. Yes, correct. Yeah. So, uh, all right, wait a minute. Okay, uh, thank you so much for giving such an informative and interesting presentation. And now are the time for the question and answer session. Yeah. So teman, ya teman-teman kalau ada yang mau bertanya bisa silahkan langsung uh, tulis di kolom chat gitu. Jadi nanti bisa saya langsung tanyakan ke uh, Mr. Panawit gitu ya. Atau yang mau raise hand langsung bisa. Oke, okay, so you can share your ideas, or comments, or question, anything. All right, we have in the chat actually yeah, yeah. Oh. from Yoga Adi Pratama. How if the company culture is bad, what we should act and we just only employee as to resign or just do nothing? <laughs> but if I just do understand, yeah, then it just hurt the feeling. If we, if we just nothing to do, it will hurt the feeling. Okay. Okay. So like I told you, we remember that I show you the picture that is we hesitate in yeah. our yeah. life we hesitate all the time so when we go to the point that we have to design is your choice you have to decide that you're going to turn left or turn right but you have to accept that all your decision going to have a uh, action reflection back to you so for example if you think that oh this company is bad i don't like this company i don't like this culture you you have options you have option to do you can keep quiet you can accept that and you can follow whatever people in that organization do hey, everybody do that oh i can do i can i just keep quiet and i can just follow the the, the whatever people do and just keep quiet, but you're gonna feel bad. You, know? you, you just, uh, you said you hurt your feeling, right? You, you feel bad, but you have to accept that. But if you cannot stand anymore, you think, if you think in your, your head, it's enough, it's enough, it's too much. So you have to act something. You have to uh, get involved. You have to raise your voice. You have to, uh, raise your voice in to, to change that behavior that you cannot change the culture. Like I told you, remember the, the word culture and climate, you cannot change the culture. The culture is very uh, stable. It's hard to change. It takes very long time to change. You can change a little bit of the organizational climate. You can change some uh, parts of it. For example, in your organization, everybody likes to come late 
it's okay. We come nine o'clock past nine o'clock, nine point five, nine point ten, and it's okay. But if you don't like this kind of uh, people come late all the time, so you you have to change yourself first, right? You change yourself. It's easy. We come. You come on time all the time, and you you just be a, a model to others. So if you come on time, you're very punctual all the time. So you can you can tell other that okay, please come on time, but you you can change a little bit, but you cannot change uh, the whole thing. If you want to change a, a big change in your organization, you have to be in another level. You have to be brave. You have to change the code of conduct. You have to change the law, the rules, the rules of the organization. But for sure, if you do something very strong, very aggressive, so you get the effect going to come back to you. The people going to against you. Because people going to blame you. Or oh, you are very uh, picky. You, what happened to you? You, you're not a, a happy person. You have a very strict rule. So things going to come to you. So you have, you have to decide. If you cannot stand to that situation, uh, another option, you can resign. You can go to other, other job. You have to find another organization. But that is not the way you face the problem. You just avoid the problem. It's not going to be, you're going you're gonna to face this problem again when you go to other com company and it's going to be the same the same thing, the same situation. So uh, you, the answer to this is you have choice. You have choices. You have to decide what is suit you, right? Everybody, uh, each person has different solution. So it's not always the same. No right or wrong um, solution, no right or wrong choice. So it depends on you. And um, what else? What should we do? Do, do you need to translate? Do you understand? I'm not sure. Yoka understand what I said? Mas Yoga sudah understand? Yoka understand? Or you need translation? Oh, yes, sir. Thanks. <laughs> okay. That will be easy for me then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What should we do? And how do we deal with climate and cultural fluctuation if these conditions have a negative impact on human resources. Yeah, so if you have some negative things and going to affect the human resources, uh, what can we do with uh, some fluctuation? Something uh, is you, um, the easy thing is you have to, to set the rules, to set the code of conduct. What should do in your organization, what shouldn't do. Uh, we call the social approach, T H O U S H A L T, social approach. So we have to set this uh, conduct that what you should do, what you shouldn't do in your organization, and set the rule, regulations, and then the fluctuation when uh, stop. Yeah, I think it's, it's you have to change the rules. But if in the worst case scenario, you have this, you set all the rules and regulations, but there are some, uh, for example, in the, the screening uh, step, you select bad people, uh, bad people to your organization. So the rules, regulation doesn't work. So you have to set another set of punishment for this group of people. So if we have the set of rules, regulation, code of conduct, and then you have the punishment system and the rewards, rewards and the evaluation processes. So if you have all these, this kind of uh, system that can help, so the fluctuation is going to be gone. It's going to smooth out all the problems. You need to translate. Mbak Rista sudah sudah mengerti. Understand um, what was is the name? Rista. Rista. Rista, understand the the answer? Is it clear or? Oke, okay, uh, let me translate it. So jadi jawabannya Mbak Rista uh, yang penting adalah harus ada rulesnya, ada uh, peraturannya untuk menjaga semua itu. 
Dan terlebih sebelum kita tadi awal banget, itu kan kita harus menyaring employee yang sesuai dengan uh, kebutuhan kita. Itu adalah pertama saringan pertama di situ. Tapi ketika kita sudah punya rules, kita sudah uh, sudah punya peraturan, dan kalau misalnya itu tidak dilakukan, tidak di uh, ya tidak dilakukan, maka akan ada punishment. Dan tapi ketika uh, peraturan itu di berikan, jadi akan ada reward. Oh, oke, okay. yes sir, understand, thank you. Oke. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oke, okay, so from saya Freddy Haryanto, uh, could you translate the question is quite long in <laughs> Indonesia. Oh, this one. It's already okay. yeah in your screen, sorry. Okay. Um. So you work in a service company uh, as a supervisor, and then from one of the housekeeping department in my company, HR is abolished. All decisions are immediately given by managers so that when there is a problem, for example, the weather service is not optimal or other problem always, uh, the solution to the problem is to give sanctions without knowing the root of the problem indirectly. Uh, this creates a very chaotic work climate and a very bad work culture. I, as supervisor of my department, I always take care of and anticipate that my subordinates do not make final mistakes so that the existing work climate remains stable for this problem is the role of an HRM very necessary and how to maintain good work climate when my company nurses have HRM department. I think HRM department is, uh, if your organization uh, or your company uh, do not have the, this department, it doesn't mean, oh, you cannot work anymore. Oh, it's a chaotic, it's gonna be disaster. No, it's, it's fine. You don't need HIM, but you need to be to create what the tips that I told you, right? You remember the slide I, I give? Uh, so please forward this, my slide to everyone. The uh, whenever as so, as long as you can keep the healthy uh, organizational climate is fine. You 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 don't need HIM. If you have to keep to make sure that you keep. Uh, the the climate in a very healthy climate in your organization. For example, you need trust, trust in among your uh, workers. You need inclusion. Everybody are treated uh, fairly, justice, right? You need uh, this kind of signal that they give you. The signal, the structure has to be very well. You have the rewards process and have the a good evaluation process. So if you keep that all uh, good signal, so it's, you, you're gonna work well, your climate is gonna be fine. That's why some why some small hotel is, they works very well, maybe may better than a big hotel because they don't have a HRM, but they have a good organizational climate, right? But the big hotel have a very big, HIM and they fail. Why? Because they cannot have a big HIM department, very beautiful office, but they just keep everything. It doesn't work. They don't. They don't keep track. They don't keep inclusion. They don't have a good reward processes. They don't have good evaluation process. So it's gonna fail anyway. You have big. You. Have, it doesn't matter. You have a big HIM department, but if you don't have a good, uh, healthy. And organizational climate is going to be, it doesn't work. So for this question, just keep maintain the, the climate uh, in your organization, right? I'm not sure you understand. Uh, Freddy? Yeah, untuk Mas Freddy, ini tadi jawaban dari Mr. Panawit. Kalau misalnya ethical climate-nya itu bagus yang tadi, Uh, salah satu contoh kalau misalnya kampanye itu punya ethical climate yang bagus itu kan tadi ada inklusi, ada kepercayaan, trust, ada integrity, gitu dari kejujuran juga ada uh, apa? Sorry, tadi ada struktural reinforcement itu nggak perlu pakai HR, it's okay, gitu nggak apa-apa, gitu asalkan tadi itu kampanye itu punya 
uh, kerjasama work together-nya tuh satu satu kerja dengan pekerja yang lain itu bagus gitu dan di situ juga ada tumbuh yang namanya kepercayaan nah uh, beda sama dengan uh, apa namanya company yang besar gitu misal hotel-hotel yang besar gitu mereka punya HR yang bagus gitu kantor HR yang bagus tapi mereka nggak doing well itu juga sama aja percuma gitu kalau misalnya tadi itu yang uh, di saat yang what is, what is a healthy ethical climate itu tidak tidak tercapai semua gitu jadi uh, tetap dilakukan aja tadi yang healthy apa uh, healthy ethical climate nya itu tetap di uh, gitu jadi tetap nggak nggak perlu pakai HR is okay gitu Oke, okay, maybe for the next question dari Mbak Wilda Nun. Uh, she's already raised hand, sir. Actually. This one, the Asia, As, Asifa Nun, Asisa, right? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay, Asifa first. It's okay. You... How can the communication climate be one of the most important influences on organization of productivity? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very important, you know, communication climate, because you have to make sure everybody are on the same page. Everybody understand the core value of the organization, right? You have to make sure that you communicate to all stakeholders, all uh, workers, all leaders, all the executive, everyone in the organization understand that what is our core value, what is important, what is our, um, what is our ultimate goal. And then everybody try to pursue their go this goal. So that's why, for example, university, if you think about your university, The university has to be the, the core, the, the, the core value of the university, and then all the faculty or the program have to follow that core value. The all the program have to write to develop the program that follow the core value and then produce its students to be a good student, to be the good uh, undergrad, uh, to follow the, that core values. That's why there is, uh, um, the, the university can produce students that uh, fulfill the, the ultimate goal. For the organization, it's the same. Right? We have to communicate to everyone that um, to understand and to follow uh, the, the same core value and then to uh, follow the, the same goal. So the organization is going to have a highest productivity because everybody understand go to the same page and understand what they are doing yeah understand i'm not sure you understand asifa understand yeah and the communication climate is uh, important in terms of everything in terms of trust in terms of inclusion, in terms of uh, make everybody comfortable to the workplace, to gather people, work together, to work, uh, to make harmony, uh, work together uh, peacefully. So uh, communication is very important in the organization. Uh, if you misunderstanding you lack of communication between uh, people in the organization is going to be fail. For example, if some department, I, I give example of some department in the, uh, in, in the university, some university, they don't have any meeting at all. They don't need COVID-19, no meeting. What does it mean, no meeting? There's mean no zero communication between uh, staff, right? How come you don't have a meeting at all? You need a meeting at least once a month, right? But the whole year, like in some, there is one department in my university. That's what give you example, very key example. There is no meeting at all one year. So what does what is going to happen? There is no communication. They don't understand what what they're going to do and how they're going to improve. What happened to their students? So it's not going to be work, right? So 
communication is one of the most important element you have to do. You have to improve. You can change. If you have bad communication, you can make it better. You can change this uh, dimension. What should we do and how we deal? How do we deal with climate and cultural frustration if these conditions have a negative? Oh, this is answer already, right? I've saw sexual harassment happen to my friends, similar to the situation uh, that I mentioned earlier. It happened in front of me. Actually, it happened more than once at school. Uh, in the first case, I just kept quiet. But on the next incident, I got angry and asked him to apologize. What should I do about it? What, what I do I? Oh, so excellent. Uh, so you did a very good job that you, uh, you're not a bystander anymore. The first time you keep quiet, you are a bystander, you keep quiet, you don't want to do anything, it's fine. You're not, it's okay, it's normal. Uh, but the second time you get involved, you raise your voice, you ask that guy to apologize. So that is what you did is, is absolutely right. And um, that's it. And you don't, you just, next time you can keep doing that again raise your voice, get involved. And if uh, the person who have uh, the, the, that person just attack you or get you in trouble, you can report this to the person who are uh, up high, your boss or some executive or someone is higher than him. So what you did is, is great that you uh, have a high moral and you, this is if everybody did like you, do the same like you. So it's going to create, increase the healthy organizational climate. This is good. This is a good sign. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I just really want you to talk. <laughs> if you can speak English or you can speak yeah, you better to, to hear your voice, not only my voice. Uh, right? Is it good? Two way communications. Yeah, it's, it's very good. It's good. So you can practice English as well. So let's try. Uh, next question is IRH. I don't know who, who is this. All right. Maybe uh, anyone? Oh, Nur Ida Inda. Nur in no, this one. Uh, this one is one of our lecturer. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe this one. The link word. Appendix. Irham Molana. Yeah, Irham Molana. Molana. Can you yeah, ask? Yeah. You can ask. Can you say? Yeah. Can you say the ask a question? So you can practice speaking and yeah, Mas Irha mungkin bisa dibacakan pertanyaannya biar you... sekalian latihan pakai bahasa Inggris. Ada Mas Irham. Hello. Hello Mas Irham. <laughs> so you can <laughs> it can be more, Maybe it's shy. <laughs> more fun. Don't worry, don't be shy. It's all your friends, so you know each other. Yeah, it's okay, Mas Irham. So maybe shy. So regarding the view that the leadership of the company is still traditional, you have to educate the leadership because the leaders are a bit difficult to accept suggestions from the people they hire. Most of them believe in the experiences of their fellow company leaders whose practice and theory are not the same because basically every company has a difficult culture. How to educate them? Uh, I think we it's hard to, to, we don't have to educate them actually. We, uh, we have to communicate more. 
we have to talk more. We have to uh, tune up. You know, you have to talk to them. We have to uh, discuss more. You know, the, the more you talk, the more you discuss, uh, the more you make to un understand each other. So maybe uh, you said that the the leader, the leader is maybe too traditional. And you want to change the leaders? They don't. They don't listen to you. They don't want to listen to you. They don't want to discuss. So maybe you you have to uh, try to the way to discuss. But maybe it's not um, maybe difficult. Right? You try and they don't listen. So maybe you have to prove. If you talk, you try to talk, try to discuss. Uh, they don't listen to you. You have to prove from. Uh, your performance, you try to prove from your work that your work and your performance is your way is better. For example, the lead, this kind of lead, very stubborn leader, they said, okay, do this way, it's, it's, it's good already. We don't have to change anything. You are new, uh, young, new employee, you have to follow this. But you just told them that maybe do this way, it's better. So you told them and they don't like accept you your way. So you have to prove from your performance. You, you can just keep doing what you do and make it better. And finally they will see and they will, and if they can see that you can, you can try to find a chance to talk, to discuss, and maybe you can convince them, convince them to, to understand your point and maybe try to show them that um, this is good for the organization. It's not good for you. It's not good for. It's good for the whole organization. I have this kind of experience that um, uh, sometimes, the, for example, at my university, the, the executive, the president, the director, the ex, the vice president, they are very. If they don't listen to you, I'm just a normal lecturer, so I try to convince them to do to change some way of working, but they don't listen to you. I just stop complaining, talking to them, and just keep doing what I do. And then finally they can see that, oh, what I did is it worked. So finally they, they will understand one day, but it's hard to, it takes time, you know, it takes time to change. It takes time to change because this is kind of organizational culture. It takes time to change. You have to be patient. You have to be patient and you have to be have a strong mind, strong view, you know, uh, to follow your uh, practice. Right? So don't have to, you don't have to educate them. They don't listen. So you just keep moving forward. Okay, understand? Is it okay? Yeah. But you don't have to believe me. What I say, this is from my, um, I share my, my ideas. You can, you can exchange, okay? Everybody can exchange and discuss. Maybe your, 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 your way is, is not only one answer correct. You can exchange your ideas. Anyone want to exchange? What you're going to yeah. do? You, this one is very interesting uh, story because it's happened all the time. Yes, stubborn, yes, right, stubborn right. leader, oh, stubborn leader, traditional stubborn always. leader. <laughs> Don't say, oh, always oh, a root word. You can say stubborn, uh, traditional conservative leaders, right? Anyone have any other idea how to uh, deal with these kind of leaders? Uh, maybe for my experience, I have that also. Actually, it's my former boss. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's same like this situation. I mean, like I, I always give them, uh, give him like an explanation all the time. Uh -huh. So he will understand why, why we should change, why we should do that. But it's okay, it's gonna work someday. But yeah, yeah. it takes too long. It takes time. If you want it to change. Takes time. If you want to change something, it takes up. For yes, example, you correct. want to change yourself, even ourselves, we don't like ourselves. Sometimes we don't like something in ourselves. It's difficult yeah. to change. And you want to change someone else, it's even more difficult, right? So yeah, you have yeah. to be patient. You have to be patient. Yes, all right. So actually, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I yeah. think this is the last one because okay. we're running out of the time. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, all okay. right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, finally, we come to the end of this event. Uh, I want to draw a conclusion from what the speaker said from Mr. Tanawit that uh, from his last uh, slide presentation, if ethics are poor at the top, the behavior is copied down through the organization. Jadi, uh, untuk teman-teman nanti partisipan yang nanti jadi leader for the future, gitu, uh, jangan lupa salah satu quote ini, gitu, karena ini penting banget karena uh, behavior itu copied down from the top, gitu. Jadi, kalau misalnya kalian jadi leader nanti someday, uh, please kasih uh, apa ya tujuan yang baik, gitu, contoh yang baik, gitu, untuk bawahannya nanti next. Alright, uh, finally. Please give applause to the speakers and all of you. Yeah, you. and yes. And I like to apologize if there is any mistakes from me as a moderator during this event. And well, uh, I'm Jaivina. That's all from me. See you on another event. Have a great weekend. So, Mr. Teguh, you can, uh, you can continue. Okay. Thank you so much, and uh, hope to see you one day in Thailand. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, let's give applause to both Dr. Tanawit and Mrs. Davina. Okay, thank you very much to Dr. Tanawit Winsil for the insightful knowledge that helped you share to all of us today. I hope it can keep beneficial for all the participants here. And thank you to Mrs. Davina too for guiding the discussion. It was very helpful. And the next agenda is the appreciation session. So uh, may I ask Dr. Kartati Sumakar, SAMM, to help us to hand over the e-certificates to speaker as the symbol of appreciation. Ibu Data, are you still here? Okay, thank you. Okay. So, uh, uh, sorry, sorry for the interruption. There's a, a bit of um, technical <laughs> difficulties <laughs> in my <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> uh, thank you very much to Mr. Uh, Dr. Tanawit Punsit, maybe uh, for your time and your knowledge and your sharing everything with us for today. And we hope that you will we will meet person to person in the next uh, time, if there is a time for us, uh, and you have uh, you'll be able to join us and visit in Universitas Muria Kudus. We will very welcome you. And also, if there's any anything that we can collaborate in any research or anything, it might uh, make us closer, uh, the university, uh, Universitas Maria Curtis and Universitas uh, Taksin University. Thank you for your sharing and knowledge and we will be very appreciated that. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Tan Awit Kunsit. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. We're, um, we're back to Mr. Taku. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kartate Semakar, and thank you once again to Dr. Tanawit Bunsit. And for the winner for the best three question for today's discussion, uh, it will get the door prizes. It will be announced through the official Instagram account of Department of Management, Faculty of Economic and Business Universitas Muria Kudus at Management UMK. Uh, so keep an eye for the update. And next, we will have the documentation session. So uh, for all the participants, I hope you are, you will turn on your camera and we will take the screenshot. <laughs>
Bibi Bumira Orbu Etni bisa membantu saya untuk screenshot. Yo dibuka kameranya, dibuka kameranya. Senyum. Ayo untuk partisipannya tolong dihidupkan kameranya. Akan kita. Ya dihidupkan kameranya. Oke, okay, because the party participant is uh, too many, we will have a lot of uh, pages here. So, so sorry, have... can, can I leave now or or we will have a photo shoot first, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah, we will okay. screen cap this one actually. Uh, yeah. Mungkin Mas Teguh sudah? Hah? Sorry. Uh, is it take time? Is it gonna be long? Or what? I just... Have a urgent work now. Uh, can I leave now? Finish, Pak Teguh. You can okay. continue. <laughs> Uh, Pak Teguh masih di unmute. Sorry, I, I need to get an urgent work. Can I leave now? Okay, sorry. I thank okay. you so much. Yes, yes thank, Bye -bye. You so much. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Tanawit. Pak Teguh masih mute. Oke, okay, into the next agenda that is singing bagimu negeri song. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, finally we have come to the end of this event. We thank you, Dr. Tanami Kunsit, who has given a lot of knowledge. Hopefully, all the knowledge that has been shared can benefit all of us. We also thank the dean, the vice deans, the head of management department of Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Maria Kudus, and all the participants. To the committee members on duty today, we also thank you for your hard work and cooperation so that this event can be successful. With all honesty, I do apologize for any mistakes in guiding this event. Thank you very much for your kind attention. See you in another occasion.